as preschool teachers and parents of preschool age children, we know that helping our children with their emotional development is by far one of the most important things we can do for them. Today, you're going to learn the strategies that you can bring into your home and into your classroom to be able to help those children with their emotions. Welcome back to the Preschool All-Stars Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Anderson, and with me today is my good friend, Gina Kinney. She has a master's degree in early childhood education. She's the founder of JD Educational and the creator of the Facebook page, Easy Preschool Activities. And what she's probably most well known for is being the author of the amazing children's book series, Sammy the Golden Dog. So Gina, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. Me too. (laughs) We actually reached out in the DMs to each other, and it has been so much fun getting to know you. Truly, I feel like we're like sisters from another mother. We've got... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) Same plans. (laughs) Absolutely. So tell me how you got into this series of Sammy the Golden Dog. Everybody wants to know, and I'm sure people have come across you at some point with this beautiful um, book series that you've put together. It helps children with their emotions. So where did all of this start? So I actually work with infants and toddlers with special needs. And I, in the, my past, I worked as a preschool teacher and director and parent educator. And, and while working through all of these different early childhood fields, the main thing people needed the most support with was teaching children how to manage their feelings in a positive and more productive way. And so I knew of sensory kits and sensory boxes, and I felt like parents were told how to use them, and teachers were told how to use them, and the teachers and parents are telling the kids how to use them, but there was nothing to actually teach the kids how to use them in a way they understand. It was more talking at them versus actually a curriculum to teach them what to do and how to cut a calm down, communicate and problem solve. And that is what our two, three and four year olds need the most support with. So I created Soothing Sammy. Um, that was my first book. And then since then, I um, was had so much fun writing the first one um, that I kept writing them. <laughs> so now I have four. So you mentioned calm down, communicate, and problem solve. You were real specific on that. How did you come to those three things? So when we're as adults, when we get overwhelmed, we we feel frustrated and overwhelmed in our bodies, right? So like if you're working and your boss comes in, it's 20 minutes before your time to leave, and he hands you a packet of paperwork that's going to take you 45 minutes, you don't feel good, (laughs) but you don't scream at your boss. You don't throw pens at him and you don't fall on the floor because you know that's not going to work very well. So our kids are doing that. That's the only thing they know how to do right now. They don't know the words to communicate how they're feeling. They don't know how to look into the future to try to problem solve. Maybe I'll do half of this today and half of this tomorrow. And they don't have those calm down skills like we do. Maybe we chew gum. Maybe we smell, you know, our vanilla lotion. (laughs) Maybe we drink our coffee through a, you know, (laughs) or something just to calm us down so we can have a clear head and and figure out what we're going to do next. And our kids don't have those three skills. So that is what we need to teach them um, as far as moving forward. I keep telling, telling parents when they ask me more about communication is that there's over 90 different emotions that have been identified in the human range of emotions. And for adults, 90 words isn't a lot. But for a two-year-old, they might have 50 words. A three-year-old might have 300 words, you know, and they grow and grow and grow from there. So if you have 300 words and 90 emotions, there's no way that you can actually communicate your feelings to people. And so um, Sammy 
teaches the most common feelings um, and how to calm down. And then at the end, to complete the circle, we talk about how to problem solve. And there's questions that parents and teachers ask the kids. What happens if this happens next time? What can you do instead? How can we, you know, who can you ask for help? What do we do um, if you see Johnny doing it and you, he needs help? How do we help him? And so there's just different things that, that that's a full circle. And that, that's where that problem solving comes in. Because if they don't know or remember what to do next time, then they're going to have a meltdown every single time they want a cookie before dinner. Or every single time Johnny has a green truck. Or every <laughs> so those are the key components. I love that. I I actually remember seeing somewhere on social media at one time this um, this quote, and of course I'm going to butcher it. But the general idea was why, as humans and adults, when we have bad days, we all have bad days. But why do we expect our children and this children that we teach to not have bad days? I mean, think about like as adults, how many times do you have a bad day? You're like, I just need to get in PJs, go veg, and just tune out, and yet. Maybe your kiddos need to do the same thing. They have just as many emotions, probably more, like you said, because they don't know how to process them. So they're still dealing with them inside. Right. But kids have bad days too. Yes, they do. And it's okay. And the whole idea here is to teach them what to do with those feelings so that that it's not hurtful to themselves, it's not hurtful to others, and it's actually a positive, and I like to say productive approach to feelings. So your stories, they sound a lot like what I've heard in the past called social stories, where through storytelling, you're helping the children be able to navigate and see social scenarios. And what can we do in this situation? What would you do? And then of course, when you're seeing them out in their environment and things are playing out when they're uh, doing their center time and things like that, then you're reintroducing those concepts that you just told about in stories. Would you say that is a, a similar theme here as, of, of how you're trying to teach? It's a similar theme. Assuming Sammy, so Sammy is a golden retriever, if nobody knows that yet. <laughs> so, and the kids in the book, I'll show you a picture here. Um, the kids are upset and they go visit Sammy in his dog house. And Sammy gives all these kids different sensory components to calm down, like a, a drink of water, a ball to squeeze, a song to hear, a picture to look at, all of these multi-sensory type materials to help the kids calm down. And then at the end of the book, the kids are happy. The adult asks them the problem-solving questions. And then at the very end of the book, there's a description on how to the kids in the classroom or at home can actually make their own Sammy house. And so after they make the Sammy house and it's in the classroom, it comes with the box and it has the stickers and the, the dog, you know, Sammy, the golden dog lives in the box. And all of these different printouts that can be used for curriculum on how to introduce Sammy to the kids. But once that's done and once that's complete, all you need to say is, do you need some Sammy time? Or where is Sammy? Or if a kid is just on the verge and you know something's going to happen, all someone needs to say is, do you need to visit Sammy or maybe Sammy can help? And they know exactly what that means. They know exactly who that is. And it's a positive way to talk, to encourage them, to redirect them, to manage their emotions. So it is a social story in a way, but it's also a sensory and a visual communication tool. Yeah. yeah. You've got everything in the classroom right there. I love that. Um, instead of having it to be where maybe you need a, you know, a break, a quiet time uh, in some parents obviously would say a timeout in classrooms. We tell, we go the phrases more quiet time, but um, I love what you said. Do you need some Sammy time? Do you mm -hmm. want to hang out with Sammy? Do you? And so associating Sammy with this snuggly, adorable dog stuffed animal and the items inside in his house and truly just giving a designated spot, either in a parent's home or in a classroom that is beautiful. So let me ask you then, where did Sammy the golden dog, where did that come from? 
So I have a golden retriever <laughs> and her name is Kona. And it's as simple as that. She is uh, my child. And um, Sammy, for young children, S's are easy to say. So soothing is to calm down and Sammy is the dog. So it's really easy for a two-year-old to say Sammy. It's really easy for them to say soothing Sammy because it's really short and sweet and to the point. And so, yeah, I mean, S Sammy's a golden retriever because she's my golden retriever. <laughs> so it's after her. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the story behind Sammy and, and how he came to be really is to support parents and teachers through giving them a really simple way to communicate to kids on what to do when they're feeling overwhelmed because no child wants to listen to an adult yap at them while they're overwhelmed. So you give them two simple words like Sammy time, soothing Sammy, that it's, they know immediately what you're trying to communicate. And I think they associate the feelings, right? I mean, if they are in that state of unsettled uh, or rising emotions and they hear the words Sammy, it can trigger in a good way what Sammy equals, what it can equal to them if they allow themselves to have some of that time. And because they already were set up that way as the teacher taught it, introduced them to them. So they've already got that built in, like you said, it'll remind them, oh, yes, that is what I need. And I want that because that feels better than whatever I'm currently feeling. Right. And with the Sam, when someone gets Soothing Sammy, there's Soothing Sammy songs. You can play in circle time. There's a two-week curriculum on how to actually introduce Sammy to a preschooler so they understand what he is. There's coloring pages. So it's a whole, there's some emotional activities um, that teach emotions through play and the names of emotions through play. So it's very comprehensive and simple to teach the kids. And it really gives it a positive vibe because emotions aren't negative. Everybody has them. Like you had said earlier, we just have to teach our kids how to respond to them instead of react to them. I love that. So many times I think as teachers, we, you know, every night we say, okay, and what are we planning tomorrow? Uh -huh. <laughs> Unless we already, you know, created our, our whole week ahead of time or things like that. But a lot of times, you know, we're, we're vibing with the flow of the classroom and what the kiddos need, obviously, as we should, uh, the next class day, but sure. being able to, uh, at those times though, it's usually, okay, well, what music am I going to do? What science am I going to do? What art and craft am I going to do? Things like that. Right. Or what materials I'll put out in the art center, you know, what's the classroom setup going to be, but we have to go back to like the foundation and say, those are great. And those are all important yeah. as well. But how children navigate that environment and each other at the core of it is that emotional development. So I'm so glad you put this curriculum together. Now, I have a question for you. Earlier, you mentioned how children can't foresee the future of problem solving, right? Like, I mean, and right. of course, nobody can foresee the future. But my point is, as adults, we can do a better problem solving of saying, okay, if this was my task, how can I break that out over the next couple of days? Mm -hmm. Children with their limited time frame and time capacity and understanding. What yeah. do you think that looks like for children? You know, how, how much further out are they able to understand? Well, there's a whole bunch of science behind the brain development, <laughs> but to, to break it down into short description is that a child's frontal cortex prefrontal cortex, which is the part of their brain that is in charge of problem solving, isn't fully developed till someone is 25 years old. So you think about why it's so scary for teenagers to drive. It's because they can't foresee some of those consequences that we can see as adults. So think about a three or four year old, how much their brain is developed compared to a 25 year old is significant. So that's why our job as teachers is to facilitate their thought process. So to ask them those questions, why, why are you upset? What happened? What can we do if this happens again? How do we stop Johnny from taking the green truck? Maybe we want to set a timer for five minutes. Will that help? Maybe. And there's a lot of visuals that go into this. So I'm very for visual support since kids respond really well to visual 
um, tips and tricks and um, maybe they need, need my turn cards that they can use in the classroom or just something that will support them the next time this happens. So if we as adults ask them those simple questions to get them thinking about it, that's that first step to them remembering it next time because they won't be able to come up with it themselves. That's that's our job. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Try to try to encourage them to come up with it themselves next time. Um, But yeah, I love that. And especially teachers always remembering that we are facilitators, right? I mean, sometimes as teachers, we're like, how are we going to make sure they get to know everything they need to know? But we're just facilitating their process of learning. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Love that. Okay. So how long have you had Sammy the Golden Dog uh, been able to share it with other people? He's been around for about three and a half years. Nice. And what are some stories? I mean, you've got to have heard back from these teachers and parents who've used Sammy the Golden Dog with their preschool age kiddos. What are some of your favorite ones that you've heard back? Like, I can remember this one person reaching out to me. One of my favorite stories is of a mom uh, who has three kids under the age of five. And it that's tough in and of itself. <laughs> and she had her daughter was having a really hard time processing her feelings. And she said it was interesting because she had introduced Sammy and it was working. And then she mom kind of forgot about Sammy for a while. And her daughter it wasn't redirected into her life. So she sort of forgot about Sammy after a while sitting on the cabinet. And then about six months later, mom remembered Sammy, brought it back down. And she said all she had to say was Sammy time once. And her daughter remembered what to do. And she was shocked. And she said, I don't know how I could ever live without him because it changes her reactions so fast an immediate that she saw the difference from before Sammy to having Sammy to forgetting about Sammy and then reintroducing Sammy again, that she said those skills were so important and kept her so sane that um, it's helped her and it's actually helped her relationship with her daughter get stronger because she wasn't so frustrated all the time. So that was one of my favorites. That's awesome. I think a lot of times we forget the things that worked in the past. So writing those down and continuing to use them because they're going to work again. Yes. Yes. That's great. Especially ones that Sammy's so powerful because he's that visual and tactile. She can touch him and she can see him. So it didn't take but saying his name for her to remember. That's perfect. So where can our listeners, I'm sure they're at the edge of their seats right now saying, I need this for my child. I need this for my classroom. Uh, Where can they get Sammy the Golden Dog, the um, beautiful stuffed animal, his books, the curriculum? Where can they go? They can go to my website. It's jdeducational.com. And on that homepage, they have access to all the books and they can choose the ones that best fit their needs. That's awesome. So be sure to go to jdeducational.com to find Sammy the Golden Dog. And Gina, thank you again for being on our podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. If you love today's episode, then you are going to love this. I want to give you a free gift in your hands. This is a copy of my book, Start Your Preschool, and I want to get it to you for free. Yes, I said for free. It is a 300-page book. It'll help you learn the step-by-step process to actually starting your local or your online preschool. Every single step that I walked myself through, as well as the thousands of women who's created their own successful preschools have gone through the exact steps listed in this book. Not to mention, I also share 20 amazing women's stories. So as you can see how not only did it work for me, but it works for amazing women just like you as well. I want to get you this free copy. Just go to freepreschoolbook.com or click the link in the description and we'll get it to you today. Again, just go to freepreschoolbook.com and we'll get it right to you. 